All right, welcome out to today's edition of Mamba Mindset Monday. And for some of you that might just be joining us for the first time, uh, we started doing these calls uh, about ooh, two and a half years ago. Um, it was right after the passing of Kobe Bryant. And we started doing these Ma Mamba Mindset calls because uh, Kobe was known as the, the Black Mamba. And he talked a lot about these Mamba, Mamba mentalities, which is the 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 constant quest to become the best version of yourself. And that's something that I've seen that's critical when you look at real estate, right? I mean, I've noticed that as I've hit different benchmarks in my business and different plateaus, the next step for me to get to the next level was for me to look inward and to find ways to improve myself. And um, oftentimes, I think the mistake that people make is they start to look outward. They start to look at all the different things that are in their life and they try to see all the different things that can change out, outside of them. But the real change begins on the inside first. Uh, one of my mentors, Joe Stump would always say, um, all lasting change begins on the inside first, which is so true. If you're looking at creating success and you're looking at moving to the next level, once you start to realize that you are the continual roadblock to the next level of success, then you start to realize that, okay, well, if I'm the roadblock and I'm the one that's holding things back, if I'm the bottleneck, then what can I do to become a better version of me? Like, what can I focus inward? I think the mistake that a lot of people make, especially when it comes to business, is they look at their business flaws and they focus on all the things that they're lacking in business. And then they look at what, the, what they're strong at personally. And they say, okay, well, I'm going to like double down on what I am strong at personally of who I am as a person. And this is who I am. And then they start to focus on their business weaknesses. And what I have found is that the true measure of success is the complete opposite of that. It's the opposite of what I just mentioned. And what you want to focus on are your own personal weaknesses. Like what are the weaknesses that you have in your own life that you can improve upon and become better at? And then when you look at your business, instead of focusing on all the flaws and the, all the holes in your business, focus more so on the things that you do really well. What are your strengths in business and double down on those? And especially when it comes to like running a real estate business, like too often people have real good successes in certain aspects of their business and they move away from that because they think, well, I've got to focus on this thing. So for example, someone who might be really, really good at relationships and they're really good at doubling down with their clientele and they're really good at building connection with people. And they say, well, but my weakness in my business is that I'm not a very good internet marketer. I'm not a very good online marketer. I'm not very good at lead generation. I, I, need a, I, need a, I need to focus on that to improve my business. And what happens is they move so far into that that they miss out on the opportunities if they were to double down on their strength, which is building rapport and relationships with people who already know them and like them. And all they have to do is just build a greater level of trust with those people. And so today's call, as, as with all these different calls, is to be able to talk about how can you become a better version of you? Like, what are the things that you can pull from today's discussion that'll move things forward so you can have a clear vision of what you're trying to accomplish in your life? And so as we move into this, um, I want to share with you a couple of different things that I think will be helpful as we talk about this. And so, so we'll kind of jump into the discussion today and we'll kind of move into this. And so um, what you'll find in this whole process is... Um, kind of an accounting of different things that might be holes in your own personal life. And so let's just kind of jump into this. And so the first slide we're going to talk about and share today is the following. And that is, I have self-doubt. I have insecurity. I have fear of failure. I have nights when I show up to the arena and I'm like, my back hurts, my knee, my feet hurt, my knees hurt. I don't have it. I just want to chill. We all have self-doubt. You don't deny it, but you also don't capitulate into it. You embrace it. And that's a quote by Kobe Bryant, where he talks a lot about his like self-doubt and his, and his insecurity, which is, which is interesting to think of him having self-doubt. Because when he stepped on the basketball court, he was anything but a, a model of, of doubt. And so in your business and in your life, the question is, is going to continue to come back to where do you want to be in 10 years? And I was thinking about this, like my wife and I, we went and did uh, family pictures last night and we were driving home and I asked her, I said, in 10 years, where do you picture us? Like, what does that look like to you? 
And we had an interesting discussion on our drive home last night um, with the kids. They're all kind of plugged in like they're like the different little devices in the back of the car as we were driving back. And we were just kind of talking about what it will look like. Uh, our youngest right now uh, currently is uh, turns 11 um, in a couple months. And so it's weird to think that, I mean, technically in seven, eight years, I mean, he'll be 18 and moving on to potentially, right? I mean, whatever he decides to do after after high school and so but it's kind of weird to think that we're kind of moving towards this phase where at some point there'll be some some additional transitions and so this whole idea of where do you want to be in 10 years um it's i think it's what what it does is it gives you a kind of a game plan for further out and we talked about a couple different things some things for us personally that we want to accomplish and some things that we want to be able to do with our family and and be able to impact the community and the, the places that we live and but I think that's a key piece because I think all too often we get caught up in the day to day and we get caught up in the, our current um, craziness of the lives that we're living in. We kind of lose sight of the long term of where we're headed. And as you start to look at the further out, uh, um, one of the key things is looking at like who are the people that you want to impact and who are the people that in your life that you want to have this like longer term vision with. But the minute that you decide of where you want to head and where you want to go, there are going to be instant challenges that are, going to be, that are going to be in front of you. There are going to be obstacles that are going to be both visible and then you'll have the unseen challenges that'll, that, that'll, like, that'll raise their awareness as you're moving on the path. And what you'll find is that the minute you decide to do anything, there will be challenges waiting for you that have already been created. And that's part of the, the journey getting and accomplishing something that you haven't accomplished yet. And so as you're going to do something you haven't done before, it's just knowing that there are going to be, uh, there are going to be some new challenges that you haven't seen before. And there'll be some, maybe some revisited challenges that are going to rear their heads again. that maybe you haven't accomplished or haven't been able to, to, to vanquish from previous adventures. And so I want to talk a little bit today about five things that are very common that I see very that, that, that I see in our real estate industry all the time. These are five challenges that get in the way for people as they are looking at building up the real estate business. And this is something that I see both in both agents in our brokerage. These are agents that I see that I coach across the country. But these are different people that I have seen that run into these obstacles. And they're very, very common, although we don't really want to talk about them. So we'll kind of bring these to light. The first one are feelings of doubt. So it's not uncommon to feel like doubt that we have this like this place of we're kind of questioning if we're moving forward and we're doing the right thing. There's this balancing act, especially for agents who are newer in the business, where they balance this idea of co competence and confidence. So they're like, they kind of have a little bit of confidence because they got into the business, but then they start to realize that they don't really know as much as they were hoping to know. Maybe they watched HGTV and they thought, I got this. Like, how hard can this be? Take somebody to three houses with two commercial breaks in between. That's a half hour episode. I can totally do that. I love opening up houses and I can totally do that. Like, I like searching for houses online. And so, but then they step into it and they realize, oh, oh this is a little bit different than I thought. And then all of a sudden people start to ask them questions and they're not familiar with the answers of them. They start to think, oh, uh, I don't know about this. And then all of a sudden, Real estate starts to look like work and that changes things for a little bit. And people start to wonder if this is even the right thing for them. There's a doubt starts to creep in, which is natural. Number two, the other, the second thing that gets in the way for people are ideas of guilt. So there's guilt around various different aspects. I remember in my real estate businesses, I started to find success and it took me a little while to find success. Like I was, I, I felt like I was gaining competency and I was learning how to do the business and I was going through some I had some really good mentors and trainers and people who gave me a really strong foundation but there was still some time for me to be able to apply all the lessons that I was learning and to be able to create the to, to plant the seeds that were going to start to come to fruition in my business but what I found is after a couple of years that I started to find some success and with success created an income and and there were times in my life where 
when I started to find success in real estate, I started to feel a sense of guilt. I started to feel a little out of place. I started to, when I was having conversations with different people, I started to feel a little bit different. And what I mean by that is, is I started to get a lot of grief from people because I was finding success. And there are people that were in my neighborhood. There were people in my life who oftentimes they're just kind of saying it and teasing and jest. They're just kind of making fun of like, well, in, in your part of the neighborhood or where you live and oh yeah, because of what you're doing. And there was just like this, but that it didn't, I'm trying to think of how to the best describe that. I mean, it, it affected me in a way where it was kind of just, there were like these little like chinks in the armor, right? Like I just kind of felt like I was, like I felt a little, like I started to feel this like idea of guilt, like, oh, maybe I don't know. Like maybe I maybe success. Like I don't know. Like am I am I a different person? And like there's those phrases that you hear, phrases like, "Oh well, don't you remember where you came from?" or "Don't you remember who you are?" It just it was just interesting to like go through that. And I like and there was like this internal uh, battle of of me finding my value and becoming aware of that, and then feeling okay with that. And it took me a little bit of time to like start to feel okay with having success. That I wasn't a bad person because things were happening for me as a result of my hard work. And number three, the third thing that gets in the way for many people is this idea of unworthiness. That somehow that we're not that we're not justified to have success. I was on a, I was on a call um, with an with an agent the other day. And as we were talking about her business, um, it was almost like she didn't feel that she was worth what she could charge in the marketplace. And it was clear because of how she was discounting her past services and how she was discounting her, her skill set to those that questioned it. And there were times in her business where she was just I mean, She probably wouldn't say it outright and say, well, I'm just not worthy of that. But it was clear in how she was handling different situations that she was questioning that. And because of that, it may allowed other people that are around her to question it too. And so, and it was just this idea that, well, maybe she wasn't worth that. Because of what she'd been hurt, what she what she'd heard over years, or maybe because of what an ex an ex husband had said to her, or because of um, upbringing, uh, upbringing, or just I don't know. There's just like some, some, some interesting things that were kind of embedded um, unconsciously in the subconscious of her to be able to feel this like sense of unworthiness. And I think we all have that, right? I got there are moments in my life where I just don't feel worthy of things, and uh, and then you have number four. The fourth thing that gets in the way are patterns. Uh, I went through a, a pretty powerful experience several years ago, and uh, and what it was what it helped me to go through as I went through this like three day event, um, we really focused in on the patterns that were developed in my early years and my my more impressionable years as a as a young man growing up, um, as a, as a child, and there are certain patterns that I picked up from my parents and from their parents and from generations that became embedded in me because that's just how the world was taught to me. That's how I saw it. That's how I was given an example in my life. And so I had these different patterns that are in my life. And we all have patterns. Everyone you interact with has patterns. And what happens is those patterns will oftentimes dictate how we're going to respond to different things that are in our life. And when that happens, it makes it so that we are often dealing not with someone else, but we're dealing with their patterns. So when you're dealing with a spouse or someone in a relationship, oftentimes you're not dealing with that person. You're dealing with how they have been modeled from their parents or guardians of how to handle situations. So if there's conflict, they're typically going to model how their parents handle conflict. 
or their um, grandparents handle conflict. So that's what they've seen and that's how it's been modeled. If you look at different people in your life, you'll see signs of patterns that are evident of how their previous generations have handled it. And so one of the hardest things to look at is, can you break the patterns that have been instilled from your younger years? And every one of us, every one of us that's watching this has the ability and has the the wherewithal to be able to break through those patterns. But sometimes it's pretty hard to do it on our own. Like oftentimes we might need even professional help or we might need to be surrounded by people who will encourage us to become this other version of us, to not be defined by the previous patterns set by our, our forefathers. And you can break through those patterns and kind of set a new ground. I look at my, my life and I look at the relationship I have with my wife and there are things that she does that are clearly evident that she was modeled that behavior from both her father and her mother um, and her relationship growing up. Same thing with me. If there are things that I've brought into my relationship with my wife that were modeled from my parents and from my grandparents and from watching my parents interact with their parents. Those are all brought. It's like the baggage that I bring to the relationship. Um, some of it's good and some of it that can be changed and improved upon. And so it's just knowing that, there, that we are all dealing with patterns when we're dealing with other people. And then lastly, the thing, the, the, one of the things that like, I see a lot in real estate, and that is self-sabotage, where you have people who are trying to create new growth or they're trying to create new successes, but then a lot of these other things start to creep in. And then what happens is there is a form of self-sabotage that kind of undermines the growth and the potential of what's happening in, in someone's business. So again, what gets in the way? These are five things, feelings of doubt, guilt, unworthiness, patterns, and self-sabotage. Not the most exciting topics to talk about, but they're real. And they hold a lot of people back. They hold all of us back, really. Every one of us that's listening to this, we have different examples of these things in our lives. Some of these are bigger obstacles than other ones and for each one of us, but they are evident for, for every one of us as we're trying to move through to get to the other side. Now, I want to focus a little bit on the last one, this idea of self-sabotage, because I think that is a, it is a, it's a, it's a well, I'm trying to think of how to best describe it, but I would call it a silent, it's a silent killer of real estate dreams. So self-sabotage undermines people as they're trying to build their real estate business. I've seen so many people build successful patterns in real estate only to be self-sabotaged by their unconscious and their self-destructive patterns. Like they have built this thing up and it's almost like you've built this Lego structure and you just like crush it all apart and bring it all apart. Have you ever done that with like a little kid? Like you're building blocks with a little kid and you're starting to like have fun building it. And then all of a sudden the kid just says, like, oh, I'm done with this. And they just destroy the whole thing. And you're kind of, you're almost mad because like, dude, I just spent a ton of time building this thing. And were you just going to destroy it like that? But a lot of times, like there's a version of us that does that. Like we're building all these blocks and then there's a part of us, like this little, this little kid inside of us. That's kind of like, well, we're going to tear this whole thing down because we're not even, because we're not worthy of it because it's, because that's not us. And that's just not who we are and whatever it is. Like we do things to go back to, where things were before and we self-sabotage and we destroy some of the things that we've put so much time and effort into. And then when it's destroyed, we say, yep, see, I was right. It's all falling apart. And I was right the whole time. So let's talk a little bit about this idea of self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is when we say we want something and then go about making sure it doesn't happen. So we say we want it like, oh, yeah, I want this. And then we do things and oftentimes it's unconsciously, like in our subconscious, we do things to like undermine our own efforts. So like think about, I'm trying to think of different things and maybe in your life and, I'll, and the, probably the easiest way to look at it is just to look in, in my personal life, all the different ways that I self-sabotage myself. Um, an easy way to self-sabotage myself is when I'm like, when it looks, comes to like fitness and health, but there are many different ways that I try to unplug or try to derail my efforts by trying, trying to stay on track with what I'm trying to accomplish. And I just have to know that there's a pattern, a self-destructive pattern that is going to try to go back to status quo and be okay with that, even though I'm not okay with it. Like there's this like an interior battle of like, well, we're here, so we might as well enjoy it. 
it was the other part. Like, I don't want to stay here. Like, I want to be in a better place. And there's a continual battle back and forth of the future version of me and the present version of me continually going back and forth. But that present version is a culmination of all my past versions of me. And they're all like, well, it's not so bad. It's all right. We're okay. And because of that, it holds me back from getting to the next level and getting to move my, my myself forward. And so just, I'm trying to bring some awareness to this. And I want you to have some clarity of different moments in time when you might be self-sabotaging yourself. All right, let's talk a little bit about some moments of successes. Like there are times when you have success. Every one of us has different things of success. And most of the time, these successes come as a result of different challenges and obstacles that we run into. So you've run into some challenges and some obstacles. Now you're going to have some success. And the thing I would want you to keep in, keep track of is, is that we sabotage the great things in our lives because deep down, we don't feel worthy of having the great things. Like we are doing things in our lives that sometimes we start to feel unworthy of it. And so we start to pull it apart. We start to deconstruct it and start to let it all fall apart. So we talk a lot. And this last week we had our rollout event. And if you missed the rollout event, you missed out. We had some cool stuff. Um, Rena did an amazing job of sharing um, a, a really clear vision of some different things. And I interjected a couple of random slides in there too. And uh, we had a good time. It was a, it was a, a powerful event and there were some cool things. And the nice thing is it's all recorded. It's on the Facebook live. So if you go into the, the Facebook group, you can see a lot of the things that were shared. We'll be, we'll be highlighting some of the things in our upcoming town hall meeting. So if you missed last Wednesday, you did miss out. I mean, simply put, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, but I would catch this town hall meeting coming up because they're going to go kind of a re, uh, a look, kind of a summary of some of the highlights, and then we'll have some cool stuff that will be shared. But we talked a lot about this, and I've shared this at future at past business planning. That you have these different steps in your business. You move from startup, you move to survival, you then go to stability, and then success and significance. And there's like different ways that those all interact with each other. And we're not going to depth on this right now, um, but it's just understand that there are some clear different defining places and plateaus that people run to in their business and they kind of are stagnant at times in these different levels but the thing to keep in mind is that when things are going really really well so when things start going well it's common to self-sabotage we get to the certain levels of finances or start to get to a certain level of love and success and connection and then we push past that and when we when, and when we push past that it's not uncommon to feel something that brings us back to comfortable because we're pushing past it. It's uncomfortable now. We're doing something we haven't done before and we start to feel out of whack. And when those things start to go well, we sim I would just simply breathe and just accept it. Accept the discomfort. Own the uncomfortable. And it'll become comfortable soon enough. So as you're pushing through and trying to get to the other side, just know that it's going to be uncomfortable. Like you're going to hit milestones and different things that are successes. I was on a call just over the weekend with an agent who right now has five transactions that are pending. And in that conversation, she said, yeah, I just don't know if I'm going to, I, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like it's kind of a fluke and I don't even know if I'm, how things are going to go a, a, like a month from now. And I thought to myself, are you crazy? I even said it to her like, you're, you're absurd. You have five properties under contract right now. You're doing a great work in a minimum amount of time. And you're so quick to self-sabotage your potential business because you're already like deconstructing the whole thing. You're already saying like, well, it's going to fall apart, which is just insane. And uh, she's like, well, it's kind of crazy. And I'm like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's totally crazy. The thing to keep in mind, and this is a quote by Stephen Pressfield, and it is, when we are succeeding... That is when we have begun to overcome our self-doubt self and self-sabotage, when we are advancing in our craft and evolving to a higher level, that's when panic strikes. When we experience panic, it means that we're about to cross a threshold. We're poised on the doorstep of a higher plane. Think about that. When you experience panic in your life, that is the calling card that you're on the doorstep for something amazing, for something new, for something that you're about to step into. So just know and have awareness that when you're feeling panic and you're feeling uncomfortable, there are two places to go because you're not going to stay there. Like you're not going to like want to be there very long. 
So it's either step forward and own it and be able to step into what you're about to experience or step back. And the commonplace for the vast majority of people on this planet are going to step back because it's uncomfortable and it's like outside the norm and they're going to want to take a step back. The thing to keep in mind is that addiction, self-sabotage, procrastination, laziness, rage, chronic fatigue, depression are all ways that we, uh, that we uphold and withhold our full participation in the program of life that we are offered. When the conscious mind cannot find a reason to say no, the unconscious says no in its own way. So when we can't figure out how to say no, then our unconscious mind will figure out how to do it for us. It'll unplug us from the potential successes. And so just know that that's a pattern for every single one of us. And just know that procrastination is hands down our favorite form of self-sabotage. Think about that. Our favorite form of self-sabotage is procrastination. For all of us, for myself, it's for every single one of us. That we self-sabotage by holding back, that by doing something that, like the, that we haven't accomplished. So in the end, what I want to share with you is that you create self-confidence by doing instead of procrastinating, doing instead of over planning, doing instead of self sabotaging, doing instead of complaining, and doing instead of feeling sorry for yourself. Again, you create self confidence by doing instead of procrastinating, by doing instead of over planning, doing instead of self sabotaging, doing instead of complaining, and doing instead of feeling sorry for yourself. And just know that this whole idea of self-doubt and this idea of self-sabotage, it exists for every one of us in different forms and in different heights. Um, and, and finalizing our thoughts today, I just want you to kind of think about that pattern and look at yourself in the next couple of days and weeks. And in what ways are you self-sabotaging your success in your life? You guys, I, th I appreciate you being here on our call today. Hope you have a great week. And we'll be back next week. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into some other concepts around this, but uh, I appreciate your time today. Thanks, everybody.